In our 2024 lead, Donald Trump reacting this morning on, where else, Fox, to the news of Vice President Harris picking Minnesota Governor Tim Walz as her brand new running mate. He's a very, uh, very liberal man, and he's a shocking pick, and I'm, I'm thrilled. I could not be more thrilled. Nobody knew how radical left she was, but he's a smarter version of her, if you want to know the truth. He's probably about the same uh, as Bernie Sanders. This is a ticket that would want this country go, to go communist immediately, if not sooner. Okay, they're very progressive. They're not communists. But my panel joins me now to discuss. Elena, you've been following the Trump campaign closely. This is baked in. You thought, is any surprises here as to his reaction? I mean, of course, they were always going to try to frame, regardless of who Harris picked, as someone who was super progressive, who was super left. But I can tell you part of that that we didn't hear from this morning, or that wasn't just played now, um, was him saying that, you know, he was really shocked that she didn't pick Shapiro. This right. is something that we've heard repeatedly. I've heard at least repeatedly in my conversations with Trump's advisors, which is they really did. They were very worried about Shapiro, obviously. Because, because of Pennsylvania? Yeah, he's very popular in Pennsylvania. I think the Trump team recognizes it is vital for them to win it. It is no guarantee. They're not, you know, crazy confident that they're going to win it. And I think both campaigns, you hear this from Harris's team as well. They all see Harris as being, or Harris, see Pennsylvania as being imperative to winning overall in November. But look, as for the way that they are trying to define walls, there's a couple of reasons. One is that they've struggled for the last couple of weeks, ever since Biden ended his campaign and Harris became very quickly the presumptive Democratic nominee. They've been struggling how to define her. And mm -hmm. when I talked to Trump's team about this in the last 24 hours, they said they kind of see walls joining the ticket as a chance to to try to define them together. And that's why they're jumping on this. Now, I do think that their argument that he's very progressive, that he's pushing the entire ticket to the left, will be hard to argue in some cases. I think if you look at what he did as governor, where he enshrined abortion rights into law, he protected rights for gender affirming care, he passed mm -hmm. universal gun background checks. Those are things that they're really going to be focusing on, I'm told, specifically the last four years. But as a congressman, he was actually a pretty moderate Democrat. He voted with Republicans on a number of things. He pushed to strengthen the border. He pushed to lower the national deficit. He was actually backed then by the NRA. And so I think they're still figuring out exactly which attacks will work best. Um, but again, their biggest problem right now is which attack work, attacks work best on Harris. And that's why you heard Vance today really focus in both of his stops in Michigan and Wisconsin on going after Harris far more than he did mm -hmm. go after her running mate. Let me show, CNN put together a list of the policies Waltz has taken as governor, uh, as Elena just mentioned, passing a child state tax credit uh, in Minnesota, making college tuition free uh, for Minnesota families who make less than $80,000 a year, free breakfast, free lunch in public schools, signing an executive action that offers protections for people uh, seeking trans uh, health care in Minnesota. Um, what do you make of the basic criticism from Donald Trump that, that Walls is basically as liberal, if not more liberal, than Bernie Sanders? I think that it does not have any basis in fact. When we look at where Americans are, we know that college affordability is non-existent. We know that it's the fastest growing expenditure, second only to child care. Americans want to be able to send their kids to school without having overwhelming debt that they're paying off for generations. We also know that what he's been able to do to reduce childcare expenses, to provide for affordable housing, to provide protections for those who have been overburdened by the criminal justice system, particularly black men who have been the targets of it uh, consistently over the years, those are things that the overwhelming majority of Americans are supportive of. So I think that it's a very hard thing to try to pigeonhole him in. And to what you said a moment ago, when he was actually in Congress, we saw walls work across both sides of the aisle. We saw him be able to formulate relationships. We saw him be able to be that person who brought bipartisanship. And I don't think that that's going to be something that would be dissolved should he become vice president. I mm -hmm. think that Americans are smarter than that, that the things that they're, that the right is trying to push him on are things that we've seen not only work in his state, but are honestly things that many Americans have been asking for at the national level, things that unfortunately have been blocked by Republicans. So, hey, but Jake, Jake he, he voted with Republicans 14% of the time. We're not talking 40%. 35%. And I know there's some talk about him having some past membership with the NRA. I'm a big gun guy. No one in the gun community gives a care about the NRA. It was one thing if he would have been with Gun Owners of America or Firearms Policy Institute. The NRA is irrelevant for most real serious gun, uh, gun enthusiasts. 
as it pertains to him being a liberal, let's look at the policies. Amisha talked about him doing some things for African-American men. I'll see that point. I was looking at a study from the University of Minnesota that talked about how his taxes at the local level and state level disproportionately impacts poor people, specifically people of color. I looked at migration patterns of people out of state. You can see if people are coming or going, there are more people leaving his state than coming to his state as a result of how expensive it is to live. So yes, his policies would not work for the average American person. Path to the White House runs right through this state. And with your help, we will win in November. We are going to win. The new Democratic ticket on the road tonight as Vice President Kamala Harris and Minnesota Governor Tim Walz barnstorm battleground states 90 days before the November election. I couldn't be prouder to be on this ticket to help make Kamala Harris the next President of the United States. One day after making a Philadelphia debut, Harrison Walls visiting Wisconsin and heading to Michigan as a bitter battle with the Republican rivals takes shape. What Kamala Harris is telling all of us by selecting Tim Waltz is that she bends the knee to the far left of the Democrat Party. Senator J.D. Vance taking the lead in the furious scramble to define Walls, attacking his record as governor and his service in the Army National Guard. He has not spent a day in a combat zone. What bothers me about Tim Waltz is the stolen valor garbage. Do not pretend to be something that you're not. Vance accused his rival of ducking his service to Iraq when Walls left the National Guard and ran for Congress in 2005. But Walls actually retired two months before his unit received alert orders for deployment. For 24 years, I proudly wore the uniform of this nation. The 2024 race is now fully joined, with Harris and Walls crisscrossing the country together this week. An itinerary Vance is closely shadowing. Tropical Storm Debbie interrupting plans for the candidates to visit North Carolina and Georgia. Their paths, or planes at least, cross today on a tarmac in Wisconsin. I just wanted to check out my future plane, but I also wanted to go say hello to the vice president. Former President Donald Trump spent the day away from the campaign trail, calling into a Fox News program to try and diminish Harris and Walls. Nobody knew how radical left she was, but he's a smarter version of her. A full look at the Minnesota governor complicates the liberal brush Trump and Vance are seeking to paint him with. A social studies teacher and football coach, elected to a Republican-leaning congressional district, and now in a second term as governor, where he's defending his progressive agenda. There's a golden rule. Mind your own damn business. The spotlight on vice presidential hopefuls will soon give way to the top of the ticket and back to a debate over debates. Trump signaled a new willingness to meet Harris on a network other than Fox. I don't know how she debates. I hear she's sort of a nasty person, but not a good, uh, good debater. But we'll see because we'll be de debating her, I guess, in the pretty near future. And Harris and Walls are making their way to a rally right here in Michigan. You can see hundreds, if not thousands, of people will be gathering to see this new Democratic ticket. Jake, what that means is in a span of less than 24 hours, Harris and Walls have visited each of the three states in the critical blue wall. The question, of course, is can they expand this battleground map? As we talk to voters here, there's no doubt. They are excited about this Democratic ticket. You can see the excitement behind me here. But that debate that the former president mentioned, that, of course, could change the equation. I'm told aides may be announcing more about that. Look potentially for that to happen in September. Jake? All right, Jeff Zeleny in Detroit, Michigan, thank you so much. And joining me now, the Democratic governor of Maryland, Wes Moore, who is on the Harris Walls Campaign Advisory Board. Uh, governor, thanks so much for joining us. So I know Democrats are very, very excited about the pick uh, that Vice President Harris made in terms of Governor Walls. Conservatives point to some of his more progressive policies as Minnesota governor uh, as potentially alienating of more moderate centrist voters. Uh, there's a statute uh, that basically allows abortions at any stage of pregnancy, or at least doesn't include any prohibitions uh, on abortion at any stage of pregnancy. Conservatives also point to uh, protections for transgender youth health care, including uh, gender reassignment surgeries, puberty blockers, hormone therapy. Do you have any concerns that Walls is or will be able to be painted as too progressive to win over undecided middle-of-the-road voters? I, I think Governor Walls uh, is and will continue to be an inspired choice and, and someone who really has devoted his life to public service. 
and he has he is a true patriot of this country having joined the military when he was 17 years old having been a football coach and been a, a teacher and then been a leader both in the uh, both in congress and also as a governor and i think he's been able to show with his policies that that we don't have to choose between having a growing economy and also making sure that everyone is seen in our society that while he was governor he both did things like increasing a child tax credit and also making sure that we can have a, have a, have an inclusive business environment for people to be able to grow in that you can say yes we can be the home of of united health group and gm and target and also be the home for lgbtq plus youth and be the home for individuals who are returning from incarceration and so i think he's been able to have a a really balanced common sense conversation about the, the, the future of Minnesota that I think is gonna be important for people to be understand how he thinks about his governing philosophy uh, for a nation going forward. Look, we share a lot of things, that's one of them. We're neighbors and we're not weird, that's for sure. But, but I gotta tell you something else we share is a care for the incredible natural resources. We in the upper Midwest, in our states, we care for 20% of the world's fresh water in those great lakes. And the the Great Lakes have no better friend than your senator, Senator Stabnow. I got some members of Congress I had the privilege of serving with and some that are new to that place. Let's be clear, we got to put gavels in the hands of these Democratic representatives so that we can get some work done. My friend Dan Kildee, Debbie Dingell, Haley Stevens, Alyssa Slotkin, Hillary Stolton, Representative Thander, I believe, just won a, a, a primary here. Wayne County Executive Warren Evans. And the chair of the Michigan Democratic Party, LaVora Barnes. Thank you. And I want to just take a moment. Um, it's been a pretty interesting 24 hours for me, I'll have to be honest. And I, I don't know what it, how I could explain to you walking into that arena in Philly or that field out in Wisconsin, or right here to what I have been told is the largest rally of the campaign. In and look, and look, this is a place full of working folks, students, Folks who care, and I think about this, you came out here early, found a place to park, stood in the sun, sat here and wait, and you did it. You did it for one simple and eloquent and beautiful reason. You love this country. You love this country. I couldn't be prouder to be on this ticket and to help make Kamala Harris the next president of the United States. Every day of her life, Vice President Harris fights for the American people. She's taken on predators, fraudsters, and transnational gangs. You heard it. She stood up to powerful corporate interests, and she has never hesitated to reach across the aisle, try and find some common solutions. And she has done it. And this is what we know. All the things that make me mad about those other guys and all the things they do wrong, the one thing that I will not forgive them for is they try to steal the joy from this country. They try and steal the joy. But you know what? You know what? Our next president brings the joy. She emanates the joy. Governor Tim Walz there, of course, uh, the newly minted vice presidential uh, nominee on the ticket there for the Democrats. What do you think about people sort of the, the two campaigns descending on Eau Claire today? I think it's very exciting. In Eau Claire, Wisconsin. What do you want to hear from Kamala Harris and Tim Walz? Oh, just the truth. Peaceful, joyfulness, happiness, none fighting, no more divisiveness, just positive energy. Two different campaign events. Are you hopeful that the Trump Vance team can can win Wisconsin? Yes, and I think he's growing every day in Wisconsin. USA! USA! And two very different opinions from voters. 
Outside the rally for Vice President Kamala Harris and her newly minted running mate Tim Walls, voters could hardly contain their excitement. When Kamala became the presidential candidate, my whole being changed. I've been really upset and worried and um, fear. I, now you feel how? Oh, hopeful. What do you love about Governor Walls? That he's down to earth and he, it's my own damn business and he <laughs> called the other people weird. I like that. What did you think when you heard that Harris chose uh, uh, Governor Tim Walls as her running mate? I thought it was a good move. You know, I think he's uh, he's well known around here and I think he's got the right attitude, you know, and I just hope everything keeps on a positive trajectory and we can talk about what really matters for the people in this country here. I like his uh, truthfulness and uh, the things he's done for the state of Minnesota are amazing. But just about five miles down the road at J.D. Vance's event, these voters had nothing nice to say about Harris or Walls. We can't go four more years, uh, much less four months, uh, as we are now. So we're hoping for a big change. Like Trump said, if she gets in, uh, America is going to be a bloodbath. It's just we need to get Trump in and bring um, America back great again. Some zeroed in on Wall's handling of the riots in Minnesota following the death of George Floyd. He let Minneapolis burn down, and he didn't call in the, the National Guard, and then she He went, did eventually call in the National Guard. Five days. Okay, five days later. <laughs> okay. A little too late. And then to say that it was peaceful, and there was nothing peaceful about what happened there. Back across town, Harris Wall supporters pushed back on Trump's running mate, J.D. Vance. Oh, I read his book. I thought he was a different person when I read that book, but no, he's shown his true colors. And they were even less complimentary of the man at the top of the Republican ticket. How do you feel when you hear Donald Trump say things about Kamala Harris like she just recently turned black? Well, it just shows what a horrible person he is and his he's racist. It's just meant to kind of incite and divide and I'm tired of that and I think a lot of people are as evidenced by the people here today. I mean, oh my God, in my soul. Just the joy she brings and him is just positive. I mean, for We've had such negativity for how many years? Since 2016? Since the escalator incident? I'm just done with it. I think America is too. If Democrats win, do you think you'd be able to willing, would you be willing to work with Harris Walls and their administration on immigration uh, reform and, and closing the border and border security? Well, as governor of the largest border state, I gotta tell you, that ticket is very frightening. As bad as Joe Biden has been on the border, uh, Harris Walls will be even worse on the border if all you do is look at the policies and pronouncements they have each made. Talking about Walls, listen, he, he as governor uh, was a magnet for illegal immigration by providing state-funded benefits for Ill illegal immigrants, by supporting things like sanctuary cities. Uh, he, will, he will be a disaster, as will Kamala Harris, if you look at the policies that she stood for when she first ran for president. And what she's done is the person that Joe Biden handpicked to be in charge of immigration issues. You can see under Biden-Harris, we set an all-time record for the number of people who crossed the border illegally. You can only imagine how much worse it would get under Harris Walls. So is that a no? You would not be willing to work with them? So here's the deal. They, they both stand for open border policies, and Walls himself came out against border security measures like a wall, which, by the way, I'm the only governor in American history to actually build a border wall. I can tell you, walls work. And I expect Governor Walls, as well as uh, uh, if, uh, Kamala Harris, if she were to become president, to work with me to, to build border barriers and things like that. But I don't think it's going to happen. Because i got to tell you, with, when you look at the concern that people have in Pennsylvania, Midwesterners uh, in Michigan, Wisconsin, these other key states, these are people who are against the open border policies that America has suffered through over the past three and a half years. I think they're going to vote overwhelmingly in favor of President Trump and put in office someone who will once again enforce the immigration laws that already exist and once again secure the border. Well, you, you talk about the, the border uh, and open borders. I mean, since President Biden signed that executive action, uh, <coughs> tightening border crossings, um, the U.S. Customs and Border Protection reports during June, quote, encounters between ports of entry were 29 percent lower than in May 2024 and were the lowest monthly total for the Border Patrol 
along the southwest border since January 2021, unquote. We're, we're looking at a chart right now from the U.S. Border Patrol that shows southwest land border encounters going back to last October. And you can see a peak in December, and then from May to June, there is a sharp decline. Do you give the Biden-Harris administration any credit for that drop? So, Jake, know these facts. You said it, it peaked in December. Remember what happened in January. January is when I ordered uh, the, the closure uh, of this 50-acre park in Eagle Pass, Texas, and they, the National Guard wired it shut, a, a location where Biden had been allowing 5,000 people to cross a day illegally. Now, on average, there's less than one person crossing a day illegally. Also, since that time, in Texas, because of measures that I have taken, bo uh, illegal border crossings have gone down 85% knowing that Texas represents two-thirds of the entire border between the United States and Mexico, you can see mathematically why the, the illegal border crossings have gone down so much. Mm -hmm. Jake, another important fact, another important fact, however, is this. One thing that Biden has tried to do is to camouflage the people coming across the border. They're no longer walking across the border as much as they used to. Instead, Joe Biden is flying them across the border in very large numbers and sending them to cities across the United States of America. Um one of the things that Governor Wall said in that clip that I, that I ran um, is that he was expressing sympathy uh, for Texas and saying that Texas shouldn't have to solve this problem on its own. And then he said, we should all collectively figure out how to do it. And that was Langford Cinema, and Donald Trump didn't want to do it. That refers to the effort at a bipartisan border security bill, as you know, uh, helmed by conservative <coughs> Oklahoma Senator James Langford, an independent senator, uh, Kirsten Sinema of Arizona. And indeed, that was sandbagged uh, by Donald Trump saying it was bad. And, be, and the reporting was that Trump wanted the issue uh, to campaign on, which he is indeed campaigning on. Um, would that bill not have at least helped matters? Senator Langford definitely thinks so. Senator uh, Sinema definitely thinks so. Uh, why sandbag something that would have helped with border security just to have a campaign issue? Uh, a couple of key points, Jake. One is there were never enough votes in the Senate to get that passed. Remember, there was one piece of uh, immigration reform that actually did pass one of the two chambers. H.R. 2 passed the United States House. What the Senate should have done was to take up H.R. 2 and work on that that would have been a true compromise. There was zero chance uh, that the uh, Lankford bill was going to pass out of the Senate, zero chance it was going to pass out of the House, and I'll tell you why. What it did was to authorize uh, a certain number of illegal immigrants to be allowed into the United States on a daily basis. It would have codified illegal immigration in the United States. I found it intolerable and, un and unacceptable, as I think most Americans did when they learned the details of it. Senator, nice to have you with us tonight. Um your state, I don't need to tell you this, seen as a key to winning the election. Does choosing Governor Walls over Governor Shapiro make it more difficult for this Democratic ticket in November? No, that's that's ridiculous. I'd like to remind that Joe Biden crushed Pennsylvania in 2020 with Harris as the vice president by over 150,000 votes. And Harris can and will carry Pennsylvania, regardless of who she cho uh, chose for vice president as well. And that's how exactly how it's going to play out. There is this very clear Republican talking point that has emerged in the last 24 hours that Joe Shapiro was not chosen uh, because uh, of anti-Semitism in the more liberal wing of the Democratic Party. Do you think there is an issue within your party of anti-Semitism? And are, are you confident that it's being addressed? That's just absurd and dumb. They, you know, Trump and everyone's talking about anyone other than Vance. Now, let's. Why are we talking about appointing the dumbest choice in a vice president ever? You know, it's strange. There, Walls isn't on record claiming that he hates the police, but Vance does. And and Vance now has confirmed in interviews that Trump is a sexual abuser, and he has referred to him as Hitler's America. And he go, is going after people that haven't had kids or in cat ladies. Or now Trump is going into rants about talking about who biracials and things. My own children are biracial, including Senator Fancy's children are biracial. 
So if you really want to talk about anything, of course, they want to talk about anything. Trump would be more eager to talk about Stormy Daniels than talking about Vance. And that's been a train wreck. And it's just bizarre that we're still talking about some weird parlor uh, you know, game that's now it's been over. That We know what the ticket is, and that's going to win Pennsylvania. Um, but President Biden just sat down for an interview with CBS News. He was asked about uh, his feelings about a peaceful transfer of power if Donald Trump loses. Here's what the president had to say. I'm not confident at all. He means what he says. We don't take him seriously. He means it. All the stuff about if we lose, there'll be a bloodbath. Donald Trump was referencing an economic bloodbath. That said, do you share President Biden's concerns if Donald Trump, in fact, loses come November? I mean, of course, he, he, he's just a, he's a sore loser. And he got smoked in 2020, and he lied, and Fox News had to pay $800 million in, in court because uh, they, uh, Fox carried that kinds of lies. And, of course, Trump is going to try to do anything he can, uh, but I don't think it's going to be uh, possible now because I think Harris is going to have definitive kinds of a win, and that's why I'm proud to be part of that team. You know, Harris and Walls now, as they raised $36 million just in 24 hours on that. And, you know, look at what happened in Philadelphia. Look at what's seeing right now in Michigan. You look at the kind of, of energy that's across the nation right now. And you know what really is it sucks for the Republicans? Walls is just a regular dude. You know, like his, his net worth is like a couple hundred thousand dollars, which is much just like a lot more your average Americans. And, you know, and talking about communism like that dude that was on here, like, that's just dumb. You know, talking about communism and that kinds of, it, it's it's bizarre. And, and it's talking about school lunches and standing up for LGBTQ community or talking about making insulin costs $35 or less. I mean... You know, talking about communism, it's dumb, and it's all just a weird kinds of a of a of a strategy because everybody wants to avoid talking about what a hot mess you know Vance is as a vice president and how he's even marching up to 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 vice president's you know plane. On I mean, that's that's bizarre. Like, who does who does that kind of a stuff? And you know, thinking you're going to just march over. And, I mean, it's. <laughs> I mean, that's that's whacked. And and it's like, if we want to talk about the vice president and the choice, and there's some kinds of, ooh, you know, we're going to have some kinds of, like, we can't avoid picking somebody. Like, let's talk about why you picked that guy, because Vance is in, you know, his superpower is simping. And that's why he won in Ohio, and he has a terrible campaigner, and he barely got by in Ohio, which is, is a hard red state. And he simped so hard to be now picked after saying terrible things about Trump right now. And now he's been nothing but a drag on the Trump campaign. And the Republicans are really eager to talk about anything other than, you know, how terrible of a vice president selection you know, Vance is. And yesterday I announced my running mate in this campaign, Governor Tim Walz. And as you just heard, he has an incredible record as governor of the great state of Minnesota. And to those who know him best, some people are just getting to know him, but I'm going to tell you, you got to know him real quick because he's incredible. He's a serious, serious man. He has been a serious leader and he loves our country. And you know, I've talked to some of the people who know him best, like his wife, Gwen. And to Gwen, Tim Walls is husband. To his to his kids, Hope and Gus, he is dad. To his fellow veterans, he is Sergeant Major Walls. To the people of Southern Minnesota for 12 years, he was a congressman. To his former high school students, he is Mr. Walls. And to his former high school football players, he was coach. And in 90 days, the nation will know Coach Walls by the title Vice President of the United 